have paint on the tip of a regular paintbrush. I have my skate lined and then what we're just going to do is mark it. And now we have, for the most part, our marks pretty clear. So there are two sizes. There's the wider and the more narrow one. Uh, the more narrow is going to go in the heel. Uh, and then the two wider ones are going to go in the front. So as you can see, I've already drilled the holes. Um, this is going to be a bad angle. But this is obviously, you're just going to try to feed these through the holes, straighten it out and push it down as I've done with this guy already. So this is not, this is not the easiest thing to put in there and to push through because you're dealing with a lot of resistance on the actual um, sole of the shoe. It did hurt my <laughs> it did hurt my fingers, but uh, if you work at it, you can get it in there. The this upper toe box one is the most difficult guy to get in there. Hey skaters, so this is going to be a little video review um, of the Chaya, or I guess they say Kaya. I always said Chaya because I have a friend named Chaya, but the Kaya sneaker skate system which is basically a system which allows you to mount any sneaker without the need of an aluminum or other material insole. Um, it has this plate which is as you can see shaped like the bottom of any shoe. I have these Converse on here. I just had them and thought they were pretty and they were the nicest Converse that I had so I thought they would be the best option. Rainbow! Um, everything else on here is stock. I have not changed anything. Oh, that's my kitty. Um, they come with these 59mm 80A durometer wheels. They are regular outdoor wheels, just a hair harder than your typical um, 78A durometer wheels. Um, I guess they are proprietary brand to this um, skate system. As you can see, they're branded. Um, the, the bearings that come in here are actually really great, but just so you know, they do come super tight. I had to get my skate tool and loosen them because they would barely roll, but now they roll really well still going they're great bearings um, the plate itself is aluminum um, the toe stop I know a lot of people will be interested in this it's the Kaya Aja toe stop which is a fixed toe stop it actually it I thought it had a, a hex key loosening system but it doesn't um, from what I have heard from someone else who has these skates in order to loosen them or change them or replace them you just have to twist it counterclockwise however I have not yet been able to do that um, I gave myself blisters on my hands trying to loosen these things and they're just machined in there so dang tight that I cannot get them off but um, the girl that I've been talking to she was able to get them off and they just twist off if you twist them counterclockwise so I may have someone stronger than me I mean I'm strong I'm a strong person um, but I cannot for the life of me get these off um, but as far as fixed toe stops go they seem like okay they are the same rubbery material as the Kaya Cherry Bombs which I know a lot of people love I do love them they are kind of short for me um, this is preference um, but I tend to like a longer or I guess a lower toe stop and these are pretty short but I guess I think these are kind of marketed as a sort of park skate so if you're skating parks this might be preferable that's preference and heck if you can get this dumb thing off and you, I'm sure you can probably change it uh, I can't I want to but um, 
like as far as material, it seems fine. It's like it's it seems durable. It's not plasticky. Like it's the same material as the Kaya Cherry Bombs, and I know those are awesome. Um, ooh, let me see. So the cushions that come stock are, I believe, 92A. Um, I think all, from what I've seen, all Kaya skates come with the same like 92A cushions, which are harder than I prefer. I usually love a really soft cushion, um, but that again is also preference. And while I am talking about the cushions, I should mention that this kingpin um, system is a little different and for me a little more difficult because the kingpin, um, on most skates that I have, actually let me get my my lovely moxies. Sorry, forgive the mess. As you can see on most skates, the kingpin is facing with the open side down so that in order to change your cushions, all you need to do is loosen this and they'll slide right off, but the kingpin stays in the plate. Whereas with these Kaya sneaker skates, the kingpin is facing up into the skate. So when you loosen this, the whole pin comes out basically, which is kind of a problem because the bolt that allows you to tighten the kingpin is actually in here in a little crevice. Um, so I think in order to actually change out these cushions, you would need to take off the entire plate, which is not impossible, um, but it is annoying. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. I think if you are fr right from the get-go trying to put on a softer cushion than the 92A that comes stock, you may want to do that before you actually mount these to your shoes because it is going to be a pain to swap these out if you've already have them mounted. Um, talked about the whales. The, the plate itself is aluminum, I think, as I said, so it's got some weight to it. It feels kind of, it's heavy, but I mean, all aluminum plates are heavy, but it feels solid. Um, so, okay. So the way that this guy is mounted, let me show you something. So in order to do that, firstly, you're going to want to remember to take your insole out of your shoe. Most like shoes come with some kind of insole. These are the ones that were stocked with the Converse that I bought. So the way that it's mounted is there's these little bar type apparatus, apparati, which I have uh, a few little clips of me actually mounting them in. But what it looks like is kind of like a staple in that there are two, there are two bolts going down and they're kind of bridged together and fused by this little bar thingy, whatever you might call it. And I don't think you can remove these bolts by themselves, I think, unless it's just really tight, but to me it just felt like one whole piece, um, that kind of like a staple that I drilled a hole in the shoe and then pushed those through. So I don't know if this is like replaceable. So on a lot of skates, like on a, a, you know, any really any skate, like a moxie skate with these mounting bolts, you would want to trim them down so that you're not going to risk any wheel bite, which is if they're very low, your wheel might hit on them. I guess then it would stop your wheel and stop you dead and cause you to fall. Um, so as you can see, these are very long. So on a normal skate, you would want to trim these down so they're more flush so that you can put a bigger wheel on here. Right now these are 59 millimeter wheels, kind of on the small side for an outdoor wheel. But with this system, if you want to change the shoe, you don't want to trim down your mounting bolts for this shoe, like a Converse, which has a very thin sole, and then put on a shoe with a thicker sole, and then your mounting bolts, you know, won't be long enough to catch the screw, or the nut, I should say. Um, I don't know, just something to think about. For me, it's not a problem. Like, I don't 
foresee any issues with wheel bite because I've got so much space here and I think even if I did put a larger wheel like a 65 wheel on there I don't think I would run into an issue because it does seem like I still like I have what, like a finger and a half of space and that's only what five millimeters six millimeters larger of a wheel so I don't foresee that happening um, but just something to keep in mind. Um, so for the actual mounting process, it was not super easy, but it wasn't terrible. Um, I have, I took a little, a few little clips as I was doing this, but the things that you will need to mount it are a drill with a, I have a quarter inch screw, what do you, drill bit. Jesus. I have a quarter inch drill bit on here and I did need a much smaller drill bit to drill pilot holes um, because when I tried to just drill straight in with the big one it would not like it just would not go through the shoe so I had to drill smaller pilot holes and then make those holes bigger with this bigger drill bit. You will need a skate tool. I just use the Y3 because it's what I had handy. Um, all you need the skate tool for is to loosen the wheels because they came so tight on this I had to loosen them but once I did they were fine um, and then you will need this is the key and it did not come with this I had to order this on Amazon after the fact did not know that I needed a very specific wrench um, it's a five a five sixteenth inch wrench um, just a I just ordered this on Amazon for like eight bucks a lot of people would probably already have this if they have like a decent sized toolkit it's a common wrench but I just did not have one so I had to order one and this is so that you can tighten the mounting bolts um, the thing that I didn't love is because the way that the kingpin is mounted you have to basically you have to have the wheels and the trucks on not the wheels but you have to have the trucks on before you mount the skate because otherwise you cannot because the the bolt or the nut ugh, my words the nut is in here so it needs to already be attached before you put the trucks on so in order to mount the skate to the shoe you need the trucks on which was annoying because when then when you go in and try to tighten your bolts ordinarily what I would do is put like a hex bit on a drill and just shoo, 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 like a car but you cannot with you know my, maybe if you have a fancy drill I don't I just had a normal drill and I could not you know get it past the dang old wheels and the dang old trucks so I had to just take my little wrench and then just tighten these mothers by hand each and every one of them there is six little bolts um, and I mean it's fine it's not any kind of an issue it just took longer than I was expecting it was a little annoying but it's fine just you know put on a TV show put on a podcast and just sit there and tighten these bolts and it'll take you 15 minutes or so but it was fine so I'm trying to remember I should have written down my talking points but yeah and then I had these mounted skates um, I have not taken them outside yet. I will at some point today take them out and roll around on these wheels because I know a lot of people are going to want to get some info on these wheels and how they perform on the streets because they are outdoor wheels. Um, yeah, I think that's all for now. So I will be back in a little bit after I have skated on these puppies to let you know. Uh, just while I'm thinking about it, I did roll around on these in my apartment, which is very small, so it's not really a good gauge, but I, just my preference, I am not a flat, I, I'm a heeled boot skater, that's what I've always skated on and what I prefer wholeheartedly, so these are a, obviously a flat shoe, it's going to be a lot different for a lot of people. Um, and just by nature of the beast, like a Converse is a canvas shoe as opposed to a regular old skate boot. So it's obviously going to have uh, no ankle support whatsoever. But I think anyone going into skating on a 
sneaker skate already knows that like a converse shoe is obviously not a skate boot it's a shoe so it's not going to give you that ankle support that a lot of people want and need uh, I'm sure you could probably find a different shoe. You can put really any shoe. Oh, that reminds me. You can put really any shoe on here and it'll work. So, I mean, if you need more support, I'm sure you could find a shoe with more ankle support. Like maybe like a Nike high top or something would be cool. Um, which reminded me. So there are three sizes, uh, which seems weird, but I think each size is meant to uh, fit a range of shoes so I have the large because I wear usually a size 10 and a half these Converse are actually an 11 they were given to me as a gift so they're a hair bigger but uh, honestly I don't mind and I think maybe sizing up on your shoe might be preferable and I'll explain that in a second but these are a large so the range of sizes on the large are uh, Euro 42 to 46, which I think to US sizes translates to like a men's 9 to like a men's 13. I think it said the range goes up to a men's US 13. So I wear a women's 11, which is about the men's 9. So I'm right on the, the low end of this range, which as you can see, the plate kind of matches up pretty perfectly. So what I'm assuming that means is if you have a larger shoe, like my boyfriend wears a 14, maybe we could put a 13 on here. That means your shoe is going to hang off on this. And say if you wear like a woman, if you wear like a woman's eight, then you're probably going to be on the high end of the medium size, which means your shoe is probably going to hang off the edge. I don't know if that's going to have any effect on the feel. As you can see, mine is pretty, pretty lined up. So for me, it feels solid. But, I mean, I'm sure that's not an issue. I'm sure they worked out the whole sizing thing. So I'm sure it's probably still comfortable for really any size. I don't remember. I think it, the smallest might have been like a 1, but I could... No, that sounds too small. Like maybe like a US 6. I don't know, you'd have to look into the sizes, but I should reiterate, yes, there are three sizes. This is the large, it comes in a small, medium, large, and they fit all the way up to a US Men's 13, I believe. I don't remember the lowest size. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about as for the specs. I don't know what this little screw is, possibly for like a heel break, but I could be wrong. I don't know. As you can see, there's like a little screw. Maybe that's for something else. I don't know. Um, yeah, let's take them out. Let's take them out on the road. Let's skate them. Let's get some rolling going. Okay, I realized I forgot one thing, so I'm going to mention it now. Um, the reason why I would possibly size up on your shoe is because whenever you introduce anything uh, into your shoe like an aluminum insole or in this case these little metal mounting pieces um, they are very flat and they do fit fairly flush but whenever you introduce something into your shoe it's going to take up space inside your shoe which ultimately means a little bit less space for your foot ah. so as I mentioned these are an 11 um, they are slightly big on me just a hair big on me and so when I put these on with the skates on they actually feel perfect so why I mentioned this is because if you are going to if you're gonna be skating a lot maybe you want to like a heftier insole on these um, but whenever you introduce something into the actual shoe, it's going to mean less room for your foot. So uh, even these small little mounting pieces are going to take up some amount of space. So maybe for your comfort, um, it might be good to size up just a hair. But that, I mean, that's just my opinion or my thoughts on the matter. Honestly, it's probably going to have to require a fair amount of trial and error. Um, but these, as an 11, feel pretty comfortable on me. I did, I mean, when I laced them up, they they felt tighter than they normally do. Normally, they feel kind of loose. They just felt a hair tighter. 
Um, but yeah, there's just something I wanted to mention to consider, especially with the way Converse fit. They're very narrow, as I'm sure a lot of people know. So it's, it's probably just going to have to depend on your shoe. And also, if you're the kind of person that wears like super thick socks while you skate, something else to consider. If you like a thick sock, maybe you might need to also size up just a hair. Uh, but just wanted to mention that. Ah, okay, I remembered one more thing. Um, purchasing these guys. So, uh, I live in Los Angeles, California. There are, there's a great skate culture here. There are a ton of skate shops, but I did not find this system in any of the local shops. So I ended up, I just searched online for them and I ended up getting them from, I believe, a, a skate shop in Canada. Um, so I I don't, I mean, you're, you're probably just going to have to search them out for yourself if you're interested in purchasing these. Um, I think where I bought them was Pro Skate Palace um, in Canada. Um, they uh, cost me about $118 US dollars. Uh, and the shipping was free from the area, uh, from the shop that I bought it from. Um, so... And what came included in the box was the plate, the cushions, the wheels, basically everything you see here minus my shoe. So, fiscally, this is a not bad price. Um, if you're going to get a regular shoe and mount it yourself, honestly, it might run you the same amount or more as if you're going to buy a plate, you're going to buy wheels, bearings, probably maybe a replacement toe stop. Um, and an aluminum insole, which is not cheap. Um, I think it all, all together, this might be a more cost effective option than like your traditional like shoe mounting um, process. Um, and also, I mean, it's more expensive than like your $99 Impala skate or your $99 Candy Girl skate, but I know those are kind of scarce right now because skating has become so popular during quarantine. So for $118, it's really not bad. Like they, they feel like good quality skates to me. Um, they do come in two, two options. This one was the SLV silver, um, which is your regular cruising option. They do come in a wide truck park option, which is a little strange because the wide truck option is designed for parks but it also it still comes with these like outdoor wheels I think they're just orange but I believe they are the same wheels same size same hardness which obviously if you're gonna be skating parks you probably want a a harder wheel um, the person that I talked to who also had these skates she did get the wide truck option and she she reviewed them a little bit online she said the trucks were very wide um, almost to the point where they were a little difficult to get used to. Um, I know when they came out in their little um, social media campaign, they did use, uh, they had Skate Witch on Instagram, Skate Witch. She's a freaking amazing, or I shouldn't, sorry, I should not assume pronouns. Skate Witch is an amazing skater. Um, they, they just they shred and uh, in all the photos um, Skate Witch was using the regular stock plate. I think they had them on vans uh, but there was the same wheels and Skate Witch was skating bowls in them. Uh, I don't know how honestly I'm not a park skater. I'm learning but I can't really do much more than pumping so I cannot speak to their performance in skate parks but I mean honestly to me like if I were to guess like they they feel like any other they feel like a regular shoe mounted skate so like i f i feel like whether it's this system or mounting you know typically on a regular plate with an aluminum insole it's probably going to be a very similar experience so if you are skating parks i'm sure you could probably make this work that's a whole nother video about like shoe skates versus skate boots in the park that's a whole nother thing but um, for the wide truck option, I'm sure it would probably be fine for park skating. For cruising, I'm sure it's fine. Like I said, I'm going to take these out on the street in a little bit and really let you know. 
but I just wanted to talk about the price point, 118 US dollars. Um, so for a beginner, if you already had a pair of shoes that you want to turn into a skate or something, it's pretty affordable, honestly, because like I said, you do get the wheels, you do get really solid bearings, you get your janky ass toe stop. Whoa! They're okay. <laughs> you get an aluminum plate. When my puppy got scared, she came over. Um, so yeah, uh, it took it took a while to ship to me, like a couple weeks. But that's you know that's just the sign of the times nowadays, and that's the shop. But it didn't take that long, honestly. Like I've waited much longer for skates, so just something to consider. And that's that's just all going to come down to where you buy them from, where you live, etc. So yeah. Okay, everybody. So as you can see from the clips, I took it out. I tried them out on a your typical black asphalt, pretty rough surface, like pretty rough surface. And then I tested them out in my little parking area, which is more of a poured concrete, which is like a sidewalk surface or a skate park surface. So tested it out on a couple different surfaces. Um, the wheels felt great, like they felt like your regular old outdoor wheel on uh, the concrete. They felt like butter, so they're going to be real smooth on sidewalks. And then on the asphalt, like there was a little rumble, but not anything unexpected. Like if I were to take the 57 energy wheels out, I would probably get a similar sensation maybe a little less if you put a bigger wheel on there but that obviously comes down to wheels for the skates themselves they were fine and these outdoor wheels were fine they were a lot faster than I was anticipating which I think comes down to the bearings being really high quality um, I didn't skate a whole whole lot because as I think I mentioned before I am used to a heeled skate and that is where I'm much more comfortable so on a flat skate I felt like a baby giraffe and I didn't honestly didn't want to fall and hurt myself so I only took it out for a little bit um, if you are used to a more flat skate I'm sure you will enjoy these or if you want to try a flat skate I'm sure they will be fine the toe stop held up decently well I did a couple toe stop drags also don't come for me I know it's not the most popular style of stopping and I know a lot of people don't like it or have issues against it but I am of the opinion that if you are used to it and good at it it's a valid it's a valid way to stop that's what I usually do if I'm on a rough street and I'm going a little too fast so as you can see it held up decently well I did a couple turnaround toe stops and like the design is still there like I said before this is the material of the Kaya cherry bomb so it's like a solid toe stop um, yeah lasted like pretty well the wheels lasted just fine um, I did for the maneuverability of it I definitely noticed 
that because it has harder cushions, maybe because it has a bit of a wider wheelbase. It did not have as much maneuverability as I'm used to. So I, if it were me, I would probably, just because I prefer a softer cushion, I would probably throw some softer cushions on here. I don't know if I will because I don't know if I want to invest that much time and money <laughs> in these. They were kind of more just a fun thing. But if you are trying to make these like your primary skate, like your main setup, then obviously you can customize them however you would like, um, whether that be your cushions or your wheels or your toe stop or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I took them out on the road and they felt fine. Um, maneuverability wasn't great. It wasn't bad. Like I could kind of turn, but not super well. Um, but again, that, that, and I, I consider myself like an intermediate skater at the rink. I'm better outdoors. I'm a little rougher. I'm not a park skater. I'm learning, but that's kind of my skill level in case you're wondering. Um, I took, this, this is, comes down to the shoe, but I kind of took a knee for a hot sec and got a little bit of a scuff on the converse, but that's to be expected with any skate or any skate shoe, really. Um, I'm trying to think if there's really anything else worth mentioning. Overall, yeah, I guess I should give my final thoughts. Overall, like, for 118 bucks and, you know, no shipping, no extra parts, this is a decent skate. Like, for a beginner who would prefer a shoe skate over, like, a moxie boot or something, or not you know, any kind of boot. It doesn't have to be moxie. It can be sure grip. It can be any kind of boot. If you are a beginner and you prefer a shoe skate style, honestly, this would be a really good option for you. It's a pretty decent quality for only being about 118 US dollars. Um, so really, honestly, check it out and you can, you can put any shoe on it. It's not the easiest thing to mount the shoes so if you are thinking oh maybe I'll just like change out my shoes based on my outfit or whatever that's probably not going to be a great option for you because it is going to be difficult to take these off and put these on you know more than once not difficult but annoying and time consuming so I don't know. But honestly, if if I was just, you know, a random skater and I paid 118 bucks for this pair of skates, I'd be stoked. Like, it was fun. It's fun. Like, I kind of want to put some harder wheels on these and take it to the rink because I feel like it's just, I don't know, it's flashy and it's cute and it's fun. Maybe take it to the beach path and stuff. I don't know, it's, it's a fun little skate. And you can definitely learn on this, for sure. Like, if you were a beginner, this would be a fantastic skate for you to learn on. The bearings are really fast. Honestly, it scared me because, like I said, I'm a heeled boot skater. And being on a flat boot is very daunting to me. And I was like a baby giraffe. And the fact that I was going pretty fast on these, like, scared me. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 slow down. Um... But yeah, if you're a beginner or probably even an intermediate skater, you would do pretty well with this skate. Like, yeah, I'm happy. I'm I'm pretty stoked on this. And I consider myself fairly knowledgeable on skates. I have, I'm sure you've seen, I have a million pairs of skates, like eight <laughs> pairs of skates, different brands, different styles. And yeah, I like them, man. They're fun. They're fun. They're just fun skates. Yeah. Okay, stay safe everybody, later skaters!